Hi, good evening. Honorable, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we also understand that it's quite a busy day in the house, and so we'd want to make this brief. Um, first off, uh, let's look at the individual uh, involved in, in this issue, the Member of Parliament for Abetifi. Um, he is an MP, and you raise issues with him not receiving permission from the Speaker to hold a profitable office. And so he has breached the constitution. Do you care to um, expand this more for us? Yes, good evening to all listeners. If you pay regard to Article 78 and uh, 98 of the 1992 constitution, it is clear that ministers of state and members of parliament, if they want to engage in an office of profit, hold an office of profit, engage in the you know, transactions, do... Uh, uh, pursue business interest, they will have to apply to the committee on members holding profit. And that application will be considered. They have to prove that they will not be in conflict. Uh, they, whatever they are going to do will not conflict with the mandate that they have, either as members of parliament or as ministers of state. And the committee will submit uh, their findings and recommendations to the speaker and it is a speaker who grants the final approval allowing ministers or MPs to hold offices of profit. In the case of the Honorable Brad Champo, my diligent check with the committee, indeed the, the clerk to the committee has submitted to me all 47 names between 2021 and 2024, those who applied and those who have received permission from the right honorable speaker the honorable brian champon is not part of that list never applied never received any 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 permission from the speaker so it's one of the reliefs i'm seeking in this charge petition that the honorable brian champon could not have been eligible to even participate that is beyond the fundamental issues of conflict of interest of uh, abuse of power uh the flagrant disregard for the procurement law the abuse of due process, uh, which are the other ground I have uh, submitted with documentation, uh, evidence. I have attached a considerable number of intercepted documents, mm. including including letters from lawyers of the minority uh, shareholders at Rich Royal Hotel. Right. Who, who oh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll be going into that. We'll, we'll go into the details of, of these documents. But I first of want to find out if you have brought this situation uh, to the attention of the speaker, irrespective of your petition to charge. So I have petitioned charge following the uh, findings that I have made. I intend to uh, give a copy of the petition to the speaker. I must indicate to you that it's been a very busy day. Uh, the house is still in session. I needed to uh, even uh, uh, seek permission from my leadership to step out of the chamber to grant this interview. So I'm hoping that when we are done, we're still in parliament. Mm. When we are done with the day's proceedings, I will formally uh, bring this matter to the attention of the right honorable the speaker. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, the petition is of the full petition, a copy of which I have for the speaker will be duly submitted to him. Right. Let's get into your petition then, shall we? Um, your petition is charged to investigate matters on conflict of interest, abuse of power, lack of due process, procurement breaches, cronyism and graft. All this because a, a, an individual is seeking uh, to own shares in hotels run by SNETs? Yeah, so you need to consider that this is not just an individual. He is a public officer. He's a member of parliament and he's a minister of state. Remember that I have always held this position that public officials, particularly ministers, who are given the opportunity, the mandate to govern this country, should not be annexing assets, state assets put under their care. And you recall that 16 years ago, 
That is what took me to the High Court and all the way to the Supreme Court. In the matter of the Honorable Jacob H. Uh, God bless his soul, when he sought to purchase his official bungalow, I took the view that if the ministers before him were all purchasing their bungalows, there would have been none left for him to occupy at the duty post when he was appointed a minister, when he got to his turn. So it's a matter of principle. And uh, I mean, it doesn't matter that in the case of the Honorable Brad Champon, he's my colleague in Parliament. It is a principle that I stand by and I've been consistent about that for more than 16 years. If you look at the, 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 the fact of this, of, 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 of this particular transaction, you have SNIT strangely deciding that all of its hotels in its investment portfolio they are divesting themselves of 60%. So they will lose control. They will no longer have control over these hotels. Now, you ask yourself, who are those taking this decision? At the time that the ILO is reporting that SNET may not be able to pay pensions in a few years from now, SNET has run into a lot of difficulties over mismanagement. Well, that, that's that an issue SNET has debunked. Hotels, Hotels, hotels that are doing well mm, under his portfolio, like Labadi Beach Hotel, which paid dividends of 25 million cities last year, the year before, dividend of 10 million cities. I mean, is this not a hotel to protect, to preserve, so that you can pay workers' pension, so that workers' investment, you know, will be guaranteed? Labadi Beach is doing very well. You take Ridge Royal, I have in my possession, they are financial performance report as at March 2024. Very healthy financial situation. I mean, why are you giving all of these hotels away? And the other issue... Oh, no, but these, are, these, are, these are two, this, out, of the, two out of the six you mentioned. Or these are two out of the six you identified. So, 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 so if you allow me, there, there, there are also issues to do with evaluation. You know, the valuation has not been transparent, it's not, it's not been credible. So even if, even if, even if you will want to divert, it ought to be done in a manner that guarantees value for money. That has not happened in this case. If you see some of the figures, I mean, <laughs> the documentation I have, which I've attached to this petition, I mean, this, this is just a giveaway. Then there are also matters relating to abuse of power and lack of due process. If you look at the case of Royal Ridge, before Royal Ridge Hotel or the Ridge Royal Hotel should have been included in that notice, in that public notice of 7 February 2022, there ought to have been a shareholders meeting. The minority shareholders, their consent should have been sought. None of that was done. As I speak to you, it has become a matter of litigation. Their lawyers have written to SNIT. And SNIT has now belatedly written to the minority shareholders, giving them a 45-day window, which lapsed on the 12th of May, a few days ago. So you see, I mean, it's the, 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 the deliberate arm twisted, the, the disregard for due process, the way and manner everything appears to be skewed so that every hotel, all the six hotels, will be handed over to one person. It's totally wrong and unacceptable. And you see, these are fundamental issues about how we want our country to run, how we want public officials to conduct themselves. Is it right? That as a minister, you sit in cabinet, these matters come up, you have insider information, you know, about the about 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 all of these these aspects. And then you participate in the purchase. It is all handed over to you. <laughs> I mean, is this is this a fair and just system? Do we have a level playing field? Honorable. Should 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 ministers of state be, be, be participating? In these transactions, assets mm. placed under your care. So, 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 so these are fundamental issues. And if we are not affronted by this, if if if, if we are not outraged by this, then I don't know what will outrage us. I mean, we we must have. Oh, no, we must have principle.
Hmm. So far, you have raised issues of principle and, uh, to an extent, ethics. But um, has anything illegal been done? Has any illegality uh, been, been, been committed? I have been listening a litany of illegalities, unless you've not been listening to me. I first talked about the constitutional violations under Article 78 and Article 98, where he was not eligible to participate in, 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 in this transaction in the first place. He doesn't have uh, authorization from the Speaker. That's on the individual uh, involved, to, Brian Champo. Yes, the, yes, exactly. Then on the part of, of SNET, I've talked about the disregard for due process. Those are, those are legal matters. You know, our procurement laws ought to be respected. Right. I'm there asking. I'm asking because you know, the, the, the shareholders' agreement hmm. have, 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 have not been respected in the case of Ridge Royal. You right. know, and and the, and then the, the abuse of office, the abuse of power, the the the, the clear conflict of interest. So, 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 so these are major issues that that cannot be glossed over. I'm asking because um, you're asking SNET, uh, 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 sorry, charge uh, to right. stop the sale. But I want to find out if indeed these illegalities have been committed, then really what next? Is it the, 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 will the end be uh, the stopping of the sale? Yes, yeah, so if you look at the five relief that I have outlined, which I am demanding from, from charge, stopping the sale is only one. Um, I am also asking that they look into all of these infractions, all of these uh, violations of the Constitution, and apply sanctions. So if uh, uh, they confirm that, indeed, uh, SNIT has engaged in all of these procurement breaches, uh, the disregard for due process for our law, uh, the evaluation has been skewed and all of that, sanctions must apply. Those officials at SNIT who took these decisions, why should they be allowed to get away? You know, Shraj must make pronouncements. You see, you see, there, there, there ought to be a risk to these things. Public office holders should know that when they engage in these underhand dealings, in these shenanigans, you know, there will be consequences. It is the only way to stop impunity and is the only way to stop state capture. So I expect that Shraj will have far-reaching recommendations about sanctions on both sides, on the side of the seller, on the side of the, of the buyer, because it is clear that everything about this transaction stinks to the high heaven. Hmm. All right, well, thank you so very much. But before we let you go, we understand that the minority in parliament has staged a workout on the approval of ministers and deputy ministers of state designate, uh, uh, or designated by the president, Nana Rudanko Kufuado. Right, well, why would, would, would your side of the house not participate in this? We clearly do not want to participate in this continuous insensitivity, this disregard uh, for... Uh, the Ghanaian people. Look, we cannot have a situation where you have plunged us into economic crisis. We are bankrupt. We are insolvent. Um, nothing is working in this country. Um, you, 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 you have an economy which is on its knees. As we speak, we are going through a domestic debt exchange program for the first time in our history. I mean, it's it, it, it never happened in Ghana's history that we go through a, a, a debt exchange program where people are compelled to take financial haircuts. Pensioners can have access to their life savings. It never happened. So when there is economic crisis self-inflicted by the managers of this economy, see where the exchange rate is. Look at what is happening to the currency. Unemployment rate is at an all-time high. You, 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 can't, you can't pay teacher trainees, you can't pay nursing trainees, uh, you can't... Look, doctors are still at home waiting for financial clearance. Ten months. Th th this, th this, this country is in total disarray. So when you have created this chaos, this decay, the least you can do is to be sensitive to the plight of the people by reducing the size of government. And we have set time without number, that reduce your elephantine size of government. Show some good faith. At least, you are asking Ghanaians to tighten their belts. Let's, let's see some leadership by example. They refuse to do it. Look, significantly, 
The president vice agrees with former President Mahama that Ghana can do with less than 60 minutes. He has joined President Mahama to promise a leaner government that he will depart from what his boss is doing. Can President Kufa don't listen to his vice? I mean, your, your own vice, your, 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 this is probably the person you talk to the most in your government. You can't listen to him. If you won't listen to civil society, you won't listen to the minority, you will not listen to the NDC flag bearer. How about your own vice president who has departed from your conduct? Who says that he is going to appoint far fewer ministers? Mm. And, and, and you see, to make matters worse, when we convene today, the president sent communication to this house with the right honorable speaker read, mm -hmm. announcing another deputy ministerial appointment. So, so it's, it's like the president doesn't care. Mm. He won't listen to anybody. Very well. That is why that is why we have stayed this this, this workout. We don't want to be part of this gross insensitivity. Very well. Very well. Honorable Kujetua Blackwa, thank you so very much for your time this evening. You're most welcome. Samuel Kujetua Blackwa is the Member of Parliament for North Tongue.